Uh, my name is Dylan Pratt. I'm with Interlink Engineering. Uh, you're probably familiar with us because you're here. <laughs> we uh, were just helping host the SWUG event and um, yeah, been using SOLIDWORKS for, I don't even know, uh, 15 years or something like that. And um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and run engineering here at Interlink. So we'll go through kind of a quick tip and trick, kind of warm you up for our next presenter, um, Kaylee with MLC. All right. So I'm going to be presenting on the McMaster add-in for SolidWorks. Um, I don't know if anyone else has used it. Uh, they had a version of it that was available a few years ago well i think it, it i think it always was available but i think it came out a few years ago um i know i installed it a few years ago tried to use it thought it was pretty bad uh immediately uninstalled it yeah it was garbage and uh immediately uninstalled it and then i didn't touch it for a really long time and recently somebody told me oh no it's really good now and so i decided to check it out recently and it is pretty good now so i wanted to give everyone else the opportunity i did to relearn uh what its advantages are so we'll just kind of go through that real quick um the main three things you can do i guess i highlighted here are search for components replace components and order all the parts that you currently have in your assembly which i'll touch on here in just a second um and then we're pretty much going to just do a demo the whole time because uh, it's really going to be the easiest way to see the functionality, I think. Uh, for reference, this is where you'll go to install the add-in. So you need like admin privileges and stuff. If you work somewhere where you're locked down, you may need to talk to your IT. But this is the information you'll need to go do that. And then aside from that, let's jump in on SolidWorks. So I've got an assembly here. Pretty simple assembly. This is a customer project we've been working on for a valve lockout. A uh, unique design where you can see the valve position. Um, so one of the things, we have a couple pieces of hardware in here, and we were making some prototypes. One of the things we can do, because we already have this assembly, and let's say it's all done, ready to go, we're, we're confident. You can just hit the McMaster tab. It's got the hardware. It understands what's already in here. They have some kind of tracer or something on your on their files that you've previously installed. So these weren't installed with the add-in. There wasn't any special magic we did. It just recognized the parts, recognized the quantities needed, and put it all on the list. So right now I could just go to preview order, open order, and basically place said order. Um, simple as that, except because of the formatting with the way I'm sharing my screen, I'm having trouble seeing how to close this window, there we go. So we could just hit order and be done with it. So that's uh, that's kind of the first option. Um, uh, the simplest way to, uh, to utilize it if you've already got your assemblies together and just need to order. The other thing though you can do is um, let's say I actually wanted to put in a new part. Now, obviously you could do this from just going to McMaster. So this isn't a significantly huge upgrade, but if you have a part number, which I just didn't have one ready typed out, but let's say I just wanted to put in a new valve for comparison, I could uh, pick one real quick, say add to my assembly, Say part and insert, and you can obviously change the folder. I'm just going to my downloads. And then pretty much as simple as that, be ready to go. Now I've got a part in there. I still think it's a little bit faster and cleaner than doing it even through the normal web browser, which, you know, before I wouldn't have said the ad and did that. And now you see it's also added it to my bomb if I wanted to order again. Uh, you so an assembly and you got parts in a good 10 years. Well, recognize those parts. That's a good question. So if you have a really old assembly, assuming that part number yeah. is still valid, I think it will. But to be honest, I did not try it on a 10 year old assembly. So I couldn't say definitively, but I can tell you, I didn't, you know, 
this is a real assembly we used. We really downloaded this completely separate from the app. Um, the, I just pulled up a model that we did a, a couple months ago. We even, uh, I believe, have like this is a save as of the McMaster part. It's not the exact like same naming scheme or anything of the McMaster part. And we changed some properties because we needed it to read in a specific way on our bombs, on our drawings, but it still recognizes the part. So it's not like it just immediately loses the link with McMaster. I think they have some like in properties. Yeah, they have some metadata. Now, if I really tried to jack with it and maybe it ruined that metadata, it may not work anymore. But assuming that metadata is there, it, it works. Yeah. What is the quality of their model? Can we trust their dimensions? It's not always. Yeah. So as far as just McMaster models, yeah, I would agree. It, I, you can't always trust them. They're pretty good. But they're sometimes, yeah, they're dumb solids generally. Uh, no, actually, I take that back. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Some of them are dumb solids, but actually a lot of them, like this one I just downloaded, does have feature trees and features you can edit. So you can make it more accurate. You can remodel it. I'd say nine times out of 10, I get a good model that's very representative of the part I get. And then one time out of 10, it's completely wrong or critical dimensions are wrong. And I have to so double check. So. so you typically would use one of their models to uh, do a safety check on the interfaces? If I have the physical part and I can double check it, yes. Sometimes we're initiating the models. We assume it's correct and then validate later. Um, for initial concept models and stuff. Um, yeah, so now the other way you can use this add-in that's pretty useful is let's say I wanted to um, replace this washer. No, sorry, which one's the washer? This one. Replace this washer with a slightly larger or smaller washer. So I'm going to say, actually, I want to use this one. I'm going to say add to assembly. Save and replace. Now, what that does is automatically pull that up. I just uh, all I need to do is select the washer from the list, and then it would replace it. Now, if I only want to replace one of them, I just need to from this list delete out the uh, maybe that washer. I leave the same because it will try to replace all of them by default. That's in the assembly, but maybe it's only a couple locations. You just need to go in manually and adjust that. Um, but then I can just hit the check mark. That's interesting. It's like the bottom one of the I... No, that's wrong. That's weird. This worked really well when I did it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh, huh. Let's try that one more time because that was really weird. I definitely had this work quite well before. So maybe I click something weird along the way. Uh, I'll click a different washer. Let's go to this size. Add to assembly. Save and replace. So it'll pull that up. I'm going to delete that one. Select that new washer I just downloaded. Hit OK. Uh, for whatever reason, it does still need the mates corrected the model must be just different enough but it, overall it's still replaced pretty good so yeah. other than that in this case yeah a lot of times when you're just changing the size of something their model is the same model basically and it solves it yourself itself but in this case it didn't a lot of the parts are actually some come across as an assembly or just how pretty much all their parts come across as a multi-body assembly okay. yeah yeah, if it's an assembly, it'll be a multi-body. Now, I just hit Control-Z and undid that so that I went back to my original washer. Um, but that's uh, that's essentially what you can do there. Now, one other thing. Um, uh, yeah. Is it smart? Like, they know that you need one box of 25 or whatever yeah, I believe it does. Yeah, let me uh, see if I can go back to this order page. Yeah, so even though I had quantity two, it, it only put box one, one box. So if I think you had a more than 50, you would it would put in two boxes. 
So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't try to order you 50 boxes of washers. What if you have 51 boxes, it'll, it'll update your order to two? Um, I think that's correct, but why don't we try it? I believe I can just manually override that, go to preview order, and then... Oh, it was a box of 100, thank you. Yeah. It did stay at a box of one, though. Yeah, so let's go back. I'll change this to 101. Thank you. I assumed it was a box of 50. So if I do that, preview order, two packs of 100. Yep. There you go. So it's it's pretty smart. It does a, it does a pretty solid job, uh, no pun intended, of, um, you know, overriding and keeping the values where you should. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I feel like there was one more piece of functionality I wanted. Yeah. So you said that you change a few things on, on a part, uh, maybe even the, the file name. But if you change the file name and remove the catalog number, do you think that it really actually like uh, a property data rather than it doesn't look at the file name? I think it is. I think it is using like metadata on the okay. file, not the file name. But I actually didn't test that. I could probably do that here in just a second. Yeah. We like to change, make it more descriptive, and be interested to know that. Oh wow! Yeah. And you might have noticed I was just clicking there for a second. I just changed the unthreaded spacer, and because um, that spacer was like the same. Uh, functionally the same model. All the mates just worked exactly. You know, I didn't even have to click anything else. Now, to bring up your point, I could test this real quick. Let's just. Number one spots. Yes. Yeah, they I do. Yeah. Never, you open up property. And, uh, stuff. I'm just going to put this on my desktop so I can delete it later. So I just renamed it to test. So it has no part number in it at all. And that was the washer, right? Yeah. So now if I go to the McMaster area, yeah. yeah so it there still it knows there. it's there. Yeah. The and... Yeah. Now, granted, I didn't do that without the add inactive, but I'm assuming that it would still work. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. It, it's in a bunch of places. Yeah. On the part. So if you really go through and try to scrub all the metadata, it's possible at some point it won't recognize it, but typically a lot of this, I don't think many people based on my experience with the amount of customers I get who send me models, they're not going through and scrubbing these things. They're, uh, yeah, we we do a fair bit of overriding properties for our own bombs and stuff, but we don't go through and try to find every instance where it's put something metadata in there. So they have it in the configuration too. And I wanna say they have it. Yeah, so. Anyway, that's kind of the the quick overview, but it's it's pretty darn useful. Uh, I I certainly like it a lot. I think it it saves time now that I've gotten used to it and and trust that it actually is worthwhile now. Because I uh, like I said for a while I I was like yeah I used that add-in before uh, I'm I'm good thanks. Um, I think it's pretty good now. So any other questions or comments? Otherwise we can yeah yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. So actually this presentation, I did consider having a couple add-ins. Um, so uh, for example, actually, uh, you'll notice I say add-ins, plural, and we're really only going through the master. Um, I didn't end up having enough time to go through, I felt the other ones in detail enough. There are a couple other vendors. One of them is Misumi, uses, uh, has an add-in functionality as well. Um, Masumi is mostly, it's kind of like McMaster, but mostly uh, more on the um, automation side and various automation components, uh, linear guides, uh, variants, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I couldn't answer that currently because I haven't had enough testing. That's a good question. Yeah. If, if you've made custom links out of their, Thing. My my short answer is as much as I used it so far, I, my guess is yes. But um, I uh, we may do a future presentation on the Masumi one. I will say it's not quite as uh, 
straightforward and easy as the McMaster one. There's a bit more to it, uh, which is actually a pretty good just description and difference between Masumi and McMaster, I think, in general, is uh, quick and easy use. Masumi is a little bit more uh, complicated, I think, in my opinion. But it has extra things and has more complication, to be fair, because uh, it offers different options, too. So, um, But yeah, Masumi is one. There are a couple other add-ins that I think may be worthwhile that uh, I was going to investigate a little more and maybe do a future presentation covering other ones. Um, to that end, does anyone else have an add-in they really recommend that they want to add to that list? All right, I guess I'll be the trailblazer and test a couple more then. We like doing it the hard way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone wants to do it the hard way. Um, yeah, so I'll, like I said, I'll be testing a couple more. There's one that's uh, supposed to be really good for for um, custom note, like notes on drawings and stuff, uh, kind of a, a way of or better organizing your notes, implementing notes and different types of assemblies easily, things like that. So I'm going to be experimenting with that one, Masumi, um, maybe some other vendors. So I'll get back to you. There is one for nesting with objects. And oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah, I, I can, yeah. So j just for reference, um, Craig was just mentioning that they have one for doing layouts, like 2D layout. Um, uh, nesting software uh, for your for your designs as well and, and to be honest yeah that as well as a uh, uh, transforming um, not transforming but doing like flat pattern complicated fabric flat patterns and stuff um, I probably won't dig too much into those only because they're a little bit specialized and typically are somewhat expensive for if you don't need them especially if they're if it's a critical part of your manufacturing, they are absolutely worth it, I'm sure. But for uh, testing, I think nine out of 10 people, probably pretty close to 10 out of 10 people here wouldn't get much value. But for those that are doing 2D, um, kind of like X-carve type uh, fabric layouts, super useful. 